They ended with like 60 some odd points despite walking away with two wins. But it looks like we are getting ready. Here we go. Game number one of the Series oh. event to finish off season two of Series E. We will be starting season three at the end of the month where we will have our draft day. Of course, four squads will be drafted amongst um, the rest, the remaining partnered squads left essentially uh, to compete in three months of Series E season three. And we're already starting it off and I'm already loving the new graphics that we've got. You can see up top as well. That is beautiful. That shows the status of every team. So I'm very excited about today. That's going to be so useful, especially when a lot of times you'll, you'll find yourself with single or double members left after you've got to leave somebody to drop. For now, though, as we get into World's Edge, want to see where this circle ends up being, as that so often can determine your success alone, or your chances of success, rather. You get a lot of teams complaining about circle placement, even in the earlier stages of the game, having to go for these long rotates puts you in a very risky position to other teams that are doing the same thing and that maybe are willing to fight you. In this case, Team Timmy, as we find them right now, have dropped around what looks to be the countdown area, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're actually a launch site right now, and uh, they are getting contested. This is one of the things I want to talk about. This is the unknown factor. Where does this team drop? Where are they going to be contesting? And this is going to be it, the 50-50 going down here, but it's a slow one. Um, as it looks like neither team really uh, committing. It might have just been a, a split by one of the squads, but the prize is starting to join up on Timmy. He's got his gun out as well. The ping's going down by Timmy on to the uh, bins right outside and they've got the nades they've got him pinned down they're throwing it all in using utilizing all of their utility but it does look like that squad has come uh back together as a full three right now nice swig on the flank on the left hand side trying to find the angle here they need to grief the doors and that's what the nades should have been used for instead of trying to get a cheeky knock here but it looks like they're ready to go in and oh boy you're caught with the gun out now they're gonna go ahead and push forward with that gibraltar bubble waiting out though because of the caustic and it's gonna be charlotte phoenix on the other side greek god kodagami and serial they've got some great armors there but they do need to heal up and they are buying time with this bubble as well as timmy and co are still trying to find an entry there great taking a lot of damage as he's gonna try and block the door once again oh. praying to get that sell off but he will fall now and charlotte phoenix are getting slowly picked apart by team timmy charlotte phoenix a, a team that right now is being tested so early i i did, it hoped that we would see them sort of perform in the late game but they're getting ripped apart at the moment by team timmy they're gonna be wiped right now and that's some nice early points on the board the kp already giving you three points without even having to place but the knights they want to push this as well asura's the door with the wingman and he comes a knocking for your life unfortunately a little far from the rest of his squad and he is, of course, on that Octane, so he's going to get there a little bit earlier. Does look like Imperial Howl got a knock onto Zach Mazer. It's going to be a full-out brawl, apparently, between Cloud9 and TSM. And what? Typically, you don't see this fight taking place between TSM and Cloud9, but they're going to go for it now. It's a knock for a knock here. His naughty does go down to that nade. Imperial Howl still bleeding out on the ground. Reps only with that white armor, unfortunately, but it's the full set coming out from the other side. They heard the res going through. Oh, my lord. They commit onto it. Cloud9 get knocked out. TSM picked that one up. But now they need to get the res onto Imperial Hal. And this is super late rotation timing coming out from them. Typically, they leave Frag East around a minute 40, a minute 30. Now they got to rotate. Uh, they got to actually get the res and worry about any rotations as they're getting this res off. It does look like a prize has gone in as the Knights did try to commit earlier on. And they got the first knock there back down over at launch site. And there's, there's a lot of early fighting here, and it's something that I hadn't expected from the squads that are as big as Knights, as big as Charlotte Phoenix, as big as TSM even, and C9 that have take, chosen to take the more aggressive approach, maybe because it's the first game of the day, but it doesn't stop here. The Knights are being punished for it very early on. Those grenades are going down. It's just Bronzy and Asura left up here right on the low ground is not where they want to be. Some cheeky shots with the G7 Scout will keep Bronzy alive for now. Gets to pop the shield bad, but it is a ticking time bomb as the utility continues to rain down down and barrel bars can only sustain so much asura now getting knocked bronzy decides to stay and it might just be the thing that kills him can they clutch this the shots come through finishing off asura mercy and there they go the knights get finished off by team timmy 
throughout all that as well, TSM did get cleaned up. CLG came in with the rotate down from Skyhook and finished them off. And so we are already down to 15 full squads remaining. And as an update, the map, uh, we are going to have a launch site circle. You can see continuing to pull down how, uh, here to the south side. You can see the second ring hugging it very close to the south as well. Here's G2 on their rotate now moving through tree. Uh, there is a team over here, but G2 is going to actually hold position to try and uh, secure this natty, uh, natty drop. But it's just a triple take in there. Not the greatest, but you can definitely use it here early on, especially uh, with the fact that G2 are sitting on... A double blue armors here would like something better at this point, and they're really under no pressure to move out of this position with this squad ahead of them. G G2 to me has always been a team that I prefer to be defined by aggression, even when they were playing under the Sola Fide name a while ago. This is a squad that, when they're in zone, when they get to hold down the fort, often will just sort of sit there and not take any not take any favorable engagements until eventually they have to coin flip on a push. I like it when they're on the front foot, and at least right now, they've got this other squad on their radar in tree. I want to see them play a little bit aggressively as our controller boys really can't show us what they're all about. Seems like they're staring down the barrel of renegades. One other thing I want to note is that NRG are about to engage upon CLG right now, and I feel like NRG holding this position here, remember, they're not coming too far from staging, but holding this choke in particular was to try and spite TSM. There was a lot of banter going across, but CLG started off, NRG losing out on Nathan here as Madness with that R9 is able to pick that one up. Here's the instant thirst out from Lou as well, so NRG are going to be reeling from this one, backing away. We'll see if they recover that banner and get him back into it, but yeah, and CLG, they're on the edge. They can wait and uh, just camp the banners here for as long as they want. You've got a really nice choke point around as well. So CLG, in a way, despite the fact that they're not in a building, have a, a very secure position that they can defend, even without uh, some of the more defensive-oriented legends. Gentrifying, though, on the push here with G2 is going to take the portal out to safety, along with the rest of the squad here. They try a push. It doesn't go super well, but now you get the reset, and it acts sort of like this pseudo-revenant gate that, uh, that Wraith can lay down. The ability to poke people out, come back, reset safely, and then push in for the finish. Oh, beautiful spray coming out with that R301 from Gentrifying, but Designful does have to back away. He's got that Beast in the Hunt popping the entire time. And so now, with the fight taking way too long, you can see why they back away. The third party was coming in only from the sorting rotation here as the scan comes out. This time from Pow. Does note that G2 have backed away, but Pow has to be careful. That, that side angle from that third party is punishing them. They need to just regroup here. Again, there's just too many variables for them, but... Bowser has a nice little off angle here. He's 45 damage away, 26 now from getting that purple Evo for himself. But again, they can try to play, play Gatekeeper here. There's another two minutes before this zone starts closing in. 303 find themselves in a fight now just outside of Sorting Factory. They got a first knock. Nice wingman shots coming out from Styx there. Getting the knock onto Zara Tricky. They needed that. Styx still sitting on the white armor, 12 damage away from having that blue Evo for himself. And you, you just can't be sitting on the low numbers when it comes to these later game fights right now. Trying to finish off a kill, get another point on the board as we're only at the 15 squads remaining. Mark still closing in on that first zone. 303, though, have been able to find themselves a really nice position and should be able to hold this down right off the east side of Sorting Factory. This is a building that... You've got pretty nice control over all the rotations through it. It's, It's got a lot of flexibility uh, for where you can leave from and a lot of poke angles as we see right there with Escape trying to get some damage down with the flatline. Still also only sitting on that blue shield. I believe Gentrifying was uh, one of the players that we saw holding onto a purple, the coveted purple earlier. One thing to know, 303, even though they got that knock, did not chase after the kill just because of the immense pressure around in the area. A lot of teams now rotating in through Sorting Factory, trying to make their way um, on down. But here's Team Razor. They lost out on Zara Tricky uh, just beforehand. They were able to recover the banner here, and Tech will be playing today for them. And uh, he is on that Crypta. So he's going to be able to get that res for them if they really want to go in for it with the drone. But... 
It looks like they're just going to actually hoof it here instead. CLG making the rotate now on uh, the north side of Dome. Currently, they already got two knocks. Rakanishu and Farmer Lucas down now. And so this is going to be another big win for them. They already have four kill points. They're about to pick up two more. This is a massive game for CLG. And that is tough for Popcarts to to lose another CLG, though. Not, ha and not able to quite finish off the squad are still playing in... In the rotation, shall we say. They're still trying to find their where they're going to end up as they're sitting right outside of Dome at the moment. We'll see if they end up trying to pull the trigger soon as they have the jump pad available. And they're definitely spotted at the moment. It's difficult to call where they want to go, though, because the circle is right at their backs. Yeah, they have not been able to pick up the beacon quite yet for themselves. It doesn't look like uh, it's in the area, but they're just playing the edge. Uh, they have a lot of teams uh, trying to play the <clears throat> slow side of the circle here, but that's just funneling right into CLG, who, like I said, six kill points already to their name. They've already hit top 15, and they have great armors. You got the red on backline, you got the purples on Madness and Lou here. Again, under no real pressure to walk this one in quite yet, and so they're going to continue to play the edge and try to find some more kill points and farm up these uh, Evo shields. If you'll pardon, it's been a it's been a high octane game for them, and it continues to be as they push in, barring out this I believe what I believe was 303 that pushed into Lava City. Should, should they try and take that center path? Designful though, holding down with the rest of G2, trapped in a building, having burned a lot of their utility earlier. Don't have too much to work with, just the gunplay that they still have available to them. Although we're so close to that next level shield, Designful peeking out with that triple take. They're sharing a building right now. I sense that they don't really want to. Resulta poking his head in to try and get some damage down. Maybe try and find a knock. Doesn't get anything just yet. But Gentrifying also looking for a way in with the rates on top of the building at the moment. Is going to find himself a Gibraltar. Going to have to back away. Yeah, trying to hold the roof by yourself Ooh. is uh, nearly impossible. Renegades finally finding a crack here in this defense as G2 try to get aggressive onto them now. Bowser will be able to finish off Gentrifying, bring this down to a 3 b 2 Here comes the flank out from Bowser, though. You do lose out on one. Pal going down here, but Bowser and Saucer do clean this one up, and they will be able to get the res onto Pal. Luckily for them, Bowser and Saucer are still sitting really healthy, so the third party not that scary. They've got the armor swaps as well. We are now down to 14 squads. Team Pringles have been battling it out up against Team Razor here, and they do trade back and forth. It looks like they do ultimately get the win. The Presley getting a much needed med kit in, I think off of uh, the replicator there. And so he'll be able to get Fury back up, but now they need to recover. Joey cherished and resin back into this game. Maybe they have a mobile respawn beacon in their back corner here, as you can see now, Tomcat Rackham. I don't know if it's Tomcat Rackham anymore, but Impulsive Dream is surviving this one out by himself on the south side of the ring. Here is NRG, though. It looks like trying to make a push on to Renegades, quite possibly. This is the last thing we saw in Tree just beforehand. This is uh, NRG. They were able to recover Nathan. That's uh, very important here. We saw CLG taking him out earlier on. They've already gotten one knock. They're pushing, and they've got Lazarus cornered inside this truck out. With the bubble, he's got the map of PK, but he's not landing any shots, unfortunately, here. As hundreds takes a massive load of damage, and it's all left to Oi Senpai now in a 2v1, and he will fall. Sweet. We'll be able to pick that one up and get them back in, but here comes the third party. Renegades now oh coming God. in, and they were just biding their time. The EVA 8 here will get the re-knock onto N Rocker as Bowser is just holding the angle now, and NRG are knocked out. As quickly as they as they just got the push, they get pushed. They get taken down. NRG, a squad that all the teams were worried about coming in today. You heard it on the on the pre-show about how this roster sort of demands respect, but NRG deny it to them. Seeing the opportunity for some kills, get themselves more KP. Now at least five for them, as we saw. I believe it was. Oh. We're, we're, we're panning over to CLG now. I, I was I was curious. I was trying to nail down who exactly it was. I think it was Bowser that was holding down the kills for Renegades, but it's CLG now that find themselves in a little bit of a fight, trying to actually disengage. It seems get themselves to a little bit of a safer spot. Although they, remember, they were playing edge. They were playing this sort of aggressive style. Now finding themselves a little bit without a home, are going to try and deny it from another squad there. Bubble gets dropped, so does Defensive Bombardment, not Madness. You guys play this real patient there. You've already burned all of your utility, and this is CLG's to play at their pace. 
They already have about 7 KP to their name right now. I'm about to pick up more as Joey Cherished does go down. We're now down to our top 9 squads. 24 players remaining. We know that Impulsive Dream, I believe, is still alive. That means one other squad currently playing this as a duo, I believe. SCLG are just coming with a massive game here. If they get the win, this is going to be an easy 30 point uh, first game for them. It looks like they are getting ready for the push now. The wide flank coming out from Baxlon on the left hand side here is just the Gibraltar left by himself. Double O neck and backing off. The Kutsky did go down. Blueberry Smalls about to fall as well. And that's going to be another plus two for CLG, bringing us down to our top eight squads. Lonely fans are going to be lonely no more as they get to join everybody else that's been knocked out by CLG. And it is a growing number right now, although I'm Madness is under fire there. They're not quite ready to take this next engagement. Looking for a few heals, a reset for this killer squad that has been dominating the lobby so far. And I'm Madness definitely knows where they're being shot from. We'll see if CLG decide to go on that push. Remember, they still have that jump pad. They haven't been using it nearly as aggressively as I'd expected, going a lot more for this slow, patient play. They're definitely still racking up. The kill participation X set under fire as well. And a lot of trouble there as they eat a thermite grenade does clean on the way out, setting up for a little bit of defense with the Gibraltar and the Crypto, one of the only ones we have. We have a large funnel of teams on the northern side as well as right now Team Liquid. We're trying to gatekeep, but it's going to be dropped on the other side as Nocturnal will fall it's as muffins. well. It's all up to Muffins who will ultimately go down. Space Station Gaming are a little bit battered, but they will be able to get the reses here. Hopefully, uh, they'll be able to pick up a gold bag res or something, but no, it's just going to be the armor swaps for them as SSG now. They have to contend with CLG. More gatekeeping coming out from them. This is going to be more KP for CLG's and Niles going down. I don't know if they got the res. They did on the other side, so it should be another plus two for them. They are getting ready to throw in the Thermites to finish them off, clearing out the northern end. The difficulty, though, is uh, now they got to turn around right after this. As a uh, nice Thermite connects onto both players here. Baxlon narrowly missing out on that kill, but he does have Madness and Alu on the other side here to try and help with the gatekeep. They've got to return their focus onto that rotate now. They've got a lot of positions to play here on this platform, luckily for them. We'll see if they can keep track of that squad. There's another team right below them as well. It's going to be the full send coming out from CLG. And they are just mopping up the lobby. Space Station Gaming wiped out. We're now down to six squads remaining here. And they're just trying to make a Hail Mary play going for that jump pad. They somehow survive an X set. Do not get the kills here. The reset coming out from CLG. to use that Gibraltar down. Clayne is forced to back away. They will swap positions here. As you can see, Rambo now trying to go for the peaks himself. Oh, getting no, some decent CLG. damage. We'll get the knock onto Bowser. That's actually Renegades underneath them. This is so crazy. I, I have no idea how Renegades found themselves in this position, but it is not a good one to be in because there is hellfire raining down upon them. Even the defensive bombardment does get called in. Nimido does have to ditch from Team Dimmy doesn't want to be taken down as there's a little bit of third party coming in because that is CLG coming to clean up the rest of the kills here, grabbing themselves even more KP. They've already basically won a match with how many people that they've killed and Vaxlon is not done yet. With Madness coming over to join him, they're gonna be able to finish off the rest of RNG. We're now down to our top four squads. I believe Impulsive Dream is actually still alive throughout all of this right now. So the rat getting ultimate value here. But it's going to be the final four squads. The zone is pulling away pretty hard down to the south side. Don't know if uh, the jump pad is uh, ready there for Madness. Um, they do have the defensive bombardment at least. And they will as well have uh, the bubble to utilize. You can see MSP. They've been pretty silent because they've been able to just basically hold the position down here in the south side the entire time. I believe they come from Dome. So they have priority on this position. But it's going to be CLG. It's Timmy. MSP along with our lone rat and clg they're not even worrying about finishing here they just want to continue to pick up these kp as they are now pushing team timmy here you do have the defensive bombardment being used the bubble was forced out on the other side but it looks like we will have a moment of reprieve as uh, clg will survive right underneath team timmy it's it's really just the story of these two squads right now 
CLG healing up for a little bit more safety. Aren't going to end up taking the safe spot here. Trying to find themselves an easily defensible position as we approach the final circle. Vaxlon, very confident here. Peeking out, not going to take any damage, but definitely is spotted. Everybody knows where CLG is, and if you've been paying attention to the kill feed, you know that you want to take them out. You cannot give them such a huge early lead to start off the tournament. Now peeking out again, looking for any of the members of MSP, of Team Intel, that dare show their heads. Is there another one of those teams that, well, we, we were definitely keeping an eye on coming into today? Unfortunately... Cut back to Impulsive Dream, who actually has a pretty good angle on everybody. He hit top four, so he at least gets the uh, five placement points for his squad. It doesn't look like they got any uh, knocks or any KP, but still, hey, you walk away with a five, maybe you get a seventh here, and oh, ho, ho, ho. that was a little scary as Panders almost spotted him out, but uh, he is alive for now. He's going to have to walk this one in, and he's going to have to hope that uh, Team Intel do not notice him. Luckily for them, of course, uh, uh, MSP are not running the Bloodhound, so they don't have that scan, so they don't know that the Rhett is actually right underneath them, and he's just out of LOS of Team Timmy. But ultimately, when you walk this one in, uh, they will be watching their back, hopefully. Right now, it is the final circle closing in. It's a 3v3v3v1, and we'll see yeah. how much longer Impulsive Dream can survive for. We'll call him an X-Factor, an agent of chaos here in the side, see what he can do. This Team Intel, they've definitely got the god spot right now, throwing down the utility, making this very difficult for everyone else. The defensive bombardment, though, still being kept around for that late push. They found Impulsive Dream now. He's dead, unfortunately. Um, that's, uh, that's the end of that dream. Much as I wish he got the value, dream. though, which is really important. And uh, most importantly, uh, as well, Panders was able to get up to that purple evil for himself up against all the reds on the other side now. Uh, luckily for them, they do have a small spot to try and reset here. Six hitting that bat for now as Team Timmy are, they're trying to force them out. They're trying to use this utility. I'm surprised that they have so much left here. A lot of nades going down for them. Trying to funnel them into CLG, but CLG now have taken the flank on the right-hand side, going for the full push as well. Good connects coming out from Six with that Thermite, but now it looks like they're going to go ahead and full send it on to Team Timmy here. Instead of, instead of taking on CLG with the EVA 8, not quite connecting with those shots, but Six, what was that headshot onto a prize? Taking him down. Team Intel still alive as a full three here as CLG are damaged. Team Timmy's damaged as well and it looks like team intel they bide their time CLG. they might be able to get this win They're clg just down to lou here it's gonna be a 1v1 with the eva 8 as lou is forced to go for that armor swap 